Hi, this is Mrs. Carpenter from Parkview High School, and this video is on how to construct a frequency chart for Algebra 2. Um, you are given two things when you have to construct a frequency chart. You should be given data here. This is all our data. We don't know what it represents yet, but we know that we have certain figures that we need to count and calculate. And the second thing that we need is we need to know how many classes we have, and we're told here that we have eight classes. So the first thing that we need to do when we are constructing a frequency chart is to figure out our class width or class size. And the formula to do that is class width equals highest number minus lowest number divided by the number of classes. Now you're going to need to scan your chart carefully because sometimes you can miss the highest and lowest number, but I'm noticing that 19 is a pretty low number on here, and I don't see anything smaller, and I'm noticing that 107 appears to be the biggest number on here. And I know because I've double checked it, but make sure you double check it so you get the correct answer. So you're going to take 107, which is your highest number, and you're going to subtract your lowest number from it, which is 19, and then you're going to divide that number by the number of classes you have, which, as we were told earlier, is 8. So 107 minus 19 gives us 88, and 88 divided by 8 gives us 11. Now this step is really important. No matter what number you get when you figure out your class width, you need to make sure that you increase that number to the next whole number. So you're going to round up 11 to the next whole number, which is going to give you 12. So 12 is going to be our class width. Now, if I had gotten a decimal, say I got 8.2, I would round that up to the next whole number, which would be 9. Say I got 10.7, the next whole number would be 11. Always round up to the next highest whole number. So in this case we got 12, so our class width is 12 right here. Okay, now that I know that my class size is 12, I need to figure out what number ranges go with each class. Now at the beginning, we saw that we had eight classes. So when I make my frequency chart, I'm going to go ahead and make eight rows for each of my eight classes. But what number ranges go within those classes? We need to find the lower and upper limits of each class. All that means is the lowest number in each class and the highest number in each class. So the first thing that we start with is the lowest number that was on our chart. And if you remember, the lowest number that we had was 19. So that's going to be the first lower limit. Of our class. We know the lowest number in class 1 will be 19. Now to find the lowest number in class 2, all I'm going to do is take that 19 and I'm going to add my class width to it. So 19 plus 12, which is going to give me 31. So now I know that class 2's lower limit will be 31. I just continue on and add 12 to each number. I'm going to do 31 plus 12. I'm going to get 43. I'm going to add 12 to that, 55, and so on and so forth till I get to the bottom of my lowest limit of class 8. Now I need to find my upper limits, which is going to be the number that each class goes to. So each of these classes has a certain range and it extends out to that. Now the way we get that is, well, easily, I can just look and see what number is in class 2, which is 31, and I can just write the number right before that, which would be 30. If I look here, 43, I know I can just put 42 here. 54 is the number before my lower limit here. And just keep doing that until you run down here, and you don't have anything to go off of. So, how do I figure out the upper limit of my last class? I'm going to take my width, which is 12. I'm going to subtract 1 from it. It's going to give me 11. And I'm going to add that to my lower limit. 
So my last lower limit is 103. I'm going to add 11 to it, and I'm going to get 114. So my last upper limit is 114. Now I've got all my classes and the ranges for each class. Now that I have my class sizes on my frequency chart, I need to go through and sort my data. So the first thing that I'm going to do is look at my data and try to find any number that falls between the numbers 19 and 30, which is the range of my first class. So I recommend going through and highlighting or marking out because it can be confusing later if you miss a number. So I need to find any number right now between 19 and 30. Um, it's really easy to miss one too, so make sure you keep track. Now I found three. I'm going to make three tally marks in my chart. Okay. Now I need to go to my next class. Class two has numbers 31 through 42. So I'm going to go down through and try to find any number that falls between 31 and 42. So I went through my chart and I found that I had 10 numbers between 31 and 42, so I'm going to make 10 tally marks. I'm going to continue this with each class until I've covered every single number on my chart. Now when I get to frequency, it's just adding those tally marks up. So for class 1, your frequency is 3. For class 2, your frequency is 10. This is what you should have on your chart, and you just continue with the rest of your data until you get your chart filled out. Okay, so once you've completed counting all of your data and calculating your frequencies, to make sure that you didn't leave a number out or accidentally count something twice, a good rule of thumb is to add up all of the numbers on your frequency um, column and make sure they add up to however many numbers are on our chart. So I know I've got one, two, three, four um, rows times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, uh, columns. So 4 times 12 is 48, so I need to make sure that these numbers add up to 48, and they do, so I know that I have the correct total and I've counted every number. So that is how you construct a frequency chart. Next time we will go over midpoint and relative frequency. Thanks.